All right, good deal. All right, Galatians 5. If you got your Bibles, Galatians 5, of course, is where the fruit of the Spirit is found. And uh, we're going to look at joy and probably peace, both of those tonight, um, most likely. We'll see where we get on that, okay? The fruit of the Spirit, we did find out that the fruit of the Spirit is considered one entity, okay? It is together. It is driven by the Holy Spirit. It's not something that you get to pick and choose. Uh, for those of you that were part of that, that was on the very first uh, teaching time that we did. Um, and so you can't, oftentimes we want to think about the fruit of the Spirit is we're working on some of those, right? Uh, and that's not the case. The, the fruit of the Spirit are attributes that are produced by someone that is walking filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? You don't just get to pick out patience. You don't just get to pick out kindness. You don't get just to pick out gentleness. You don't definitely don't <laughs> self-control, peace, Patience, right? Love, joy. When you, when you look at those, you can't say, well, I got a couple of those, but I don't have any of the rest of them. You either get them or you don't. And so the way we get them is by walking in complete submission and obedience to Jesus Christ, abiding in him on a daily basis. These are uh, fruit. This is a fruit that is produced by the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5. Paul talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and he says there, of course, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against, against such things, there is no law. We looked at love last week, the agape love. That one there is on Facebook if you want to go back and our on uh, YouTube. Uh, tonight, we're going to look at joy. So what is joy? Who can give me a definition? Who can tell me what joy is? You may be right and you may not be. It's okay. I'm not going to call you down on it. I'll just let you figure it out as we go. Peace in your heart. Peace in your heart. Okay. Who else? Joy. Now everybody's scared to answer. Go ahead. Wow. Did you read my notes? All right. Uh, who else? Joy. Okay, all right, joy. All right, like I said, you've been reading my notes. Joy, I'm not real sure what I'm going to keep teaching if she keeps talking. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. Anybody else, joy. John 15, 11, Jesus said, talking about abiding in him, right? He says, these things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be made full. What is Jesus referring to? John 15, 11. Remember in John 15, he talks about abiding in him, walking in him, staying connected to the vine. That's all what he's talking about there in John 15. So when he says, these things I have spoken to you, I'll reread them to you. I am the vine, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I'm the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples, just as the Father has loved me. And I also loved, uh, loved you, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Here you go. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. What is Jesus talking about? Remaining in his word. Okay, remaining in his word, remaining in him. His joy, what is he referring to? Okay. 
Okay, all right. And he's saying that we do that by remaining in him, abiding in him, right? So what is joy? These things I've spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Abiding in him, staying connected to him. Nehemiah in the Old Testament wrote in Nehemiah 8.10, the second part, it says, Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your what? Strength, right? Most everybody in here knows that one. They were just scared to speak up. Uh, do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So what is joy? Okay. All right, your relationship with Christ, being more like Christ. What is joy? Listen to what John Piper, I got a couple different pastors here. I'm going to read their, their descriptions of joy. John Piper describes joy as... Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Word and in the world. So what did he say there? Christian joy is a good feeling in the soul produced by the who? Holy Spirit as he causes us to see the beauty of Christ in the Word and in the world. Mr. Ron. Okay. Inner peace. Okay. All right, joy that is found within, inner peace. Listen to what Rick Warren said. This may be my favorite, okay? Rick Warren's just got a way of saying a lot in one sentence, all right? Joy is the settled assurance that you've heard me use this before, by the way. It's been a long time. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right and the determined choice to praise God in every situation so think about that so what is joy it's inner peace it's abiding in christ it's love what else Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Billy Graham. He he uh, he says it real simple and real to the point. Joy is a deep and abi is is deep and de abiding. Sorry, if I could talk, it would help you understand. Joy is deep and abiding despite the worst circumstances in life. Okay. Joy is deep and abiding regardless of the circumstances in life. So what is joy not? It's not an emotion. It's not an emotion. Okay. What is joy not? Okay. Okay, so it's not circumstantial then, right? What is circumstantial? Happiness. Yes. Yes. That's right. And that can bring happiness, right? 
Happiness is circumstantial. By the way, let me tell you something. Everybody in this room already knows this. You know that nowhere in your Bible does it tell you to pursue happiness, right? That is part of our Declaration of Independence is the pursuit of happiness, but it is not biblical. Surprising? Shouldn't be, okay? Why? Because everything in the Christian life is geared around joy. Which is something that you and I cannot produce. It is not circumstantial. It is not happiness. Uh, and it's not dependent on circumstances. Happiness is based on outward conditions, which we talked about. It's, it's, um, it's based on outward conditions being favorable. But joy is what goes much deeper. I want to read you something out of... Uh, I'm using several different books uh, that I'm reading. Um, this is one called The Spirit Within You by J. Terry Young. It's the only book I've ever read by him. But I like what he says. And so I'm going to read this to you. Kind of hang in there with me, okay? It's not real long. It's just one paragraph. The joy, talking about Paul, okay? And um, uh, the joy that is one of the fruit of the Spirit, okay? Uh, the joy that Paul describes as a fruit of the Spirit is not merely an emotion which comes across the soul. Christian joy is not an emotional binge of ecstasy. Unfortunately, the idea of joy has been distorted in our day. Our culture has produced a generation of people who seek a thrill, a minute sort of life supported by television exploits, sexual saturations of almost every realm, alcohol, and drug abuse. Almost all of the things in our entertainment-oriented world are designed to bring one, quote-unquote, joy, a sort of emotional release from reality. The greatest difficulty with this kind of joy is that it takes bigger and bigger emotional charges to keep on bringing satisfaction. Okay? All right? So what the, what the world considers joy is not biblical joy. Right? What the world considers joy is in tune, really, happiness. Is what, what really is what's really going on with that. And so... We know, you know, I know that the source of joy comes from where? Yeah, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, God himself. Uh, we see that in the Old Testament, the many times that joy is used, talking about the joy of your salvation, talking about those different things, all that is sourced from God, right? Same thing with us in the New Testament. It's used many, many, many times in the New Testament as well. It is all geared by knowing and having Jesus Christ is geared by being driven by and through the Holy Spirit, okay? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Well, it's something that they do not, it's something the world does not understand because it's something the world cannot produce and it's something the world does not have, okay? And you, people that do not have certain things can't explain it and they do not understand it, right? There, there's people, there's experiences that people have had, okay, such as, I'm going to use this as a, as a term because probably everybody in this room has had someone in their family affected by drugs, right? There is a euphoria with drug addiction that only that person understands. You and I, those of us that have never put that chemical in our body, does not understand that euphoria, right? They talk about that high. They talk about that feeling. They talk about that experience. They talk about the craving of needing it when they come off of that, that, that first or second or how many highs they've been on. Why? Because it's something they desire, right? We don't, I don't understand that, okay? Although I've drank alcohol in my life and I've used tobacco products in my life, I've never put any kind of chemical like that in my body. Just never had the desire to. So I don't understand that, right? It's the same as trying to explain joy to the world. When you try and talk about what joy is, they sing the song at Christmas time, joy to the world, right? The Lord has come. It's just a song to them. They group that in a place of happiness, 
And for you and I, we know that is not what it's talking about. Joy is not found in circumstances. It is found in exactly what many of you have already said, that true inner um, 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 connection, that that certainty uh, that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, right? It's, It's a deep, what I wrote down was it's a deep personal satisfaction that Christians have, joy is, a deep satisfaction that Christians have as a result of our personal relationship with the father so can you lose it be careful what you say can you lose it okay okay all right how okay yeah 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 absolutely It, it doesn't leave you but we can cover it up by sin Right, that when you when you and I strain our relationship with God, it's different than straining relationship with each other. But when we st- we separate ourselves from God with sin in our life, it begins to pull away from the realization that we have that joy. Okay, for a Christian, you and I, for the lack of a better term, a better way of explaining this, we cannot lose our joy. Okay, the Holy Spirit, you as a follower of Christ, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. It came to live within you at the time that you made a decision to be a follower of Christ. Okay, and we're going to use the term, ask Jesus into your heart real loosely here. Okay, I don't really like that term. I don't use it very much uh, because it's a whole bigger deal than that. So, but when you come to Christ, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. At that point in time, you have the source living within you to produce the joy out of your life. You cannot lose that, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say if you didn't know that, yes, that's the case, okay? You cannot lose your joy. Now, you can cover it up, exactly what we were just talking about, by circumstances in your own life, by sin in your own life. You can heap piles of coverings on top of it until you can't recognize that it's there. But they're wrong. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna lose the Holy Spirit within you. Now you can grieve him, right? By sin in your life. When you grieve the Holy Spirit and you heap Basically, uh, coverings upon your joy. Guess what else you're covering up? The rest of the fruits of the Spirit, right? Because they come in a package deal. You get it. That is a production by the Holy Spirit. He doesn't start out with, well, I'm going to produce this one in your life. And when you perfect it, then I'm going to produce another one, right? The way the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our life is in a chunk. You get the whole, the, the whole cluster of grapes at one time. Okay, you don't get individual ones; you get them all at one time. So, uh, having that joy is a deep, a deep sense of joy arises in you and I out of knowing that our life has great significance, which is what Brother Ron kind of was talking about in the will of God as He realizes His purposes through us. So, think about that just a minute. We have a sense of joy in knowing that there is a great significance for my life, for your life as having the Holy Spirit living and producing within us, okay? There is a purpose, there is a reason, there is a design for you and I to be here, okay? Joy comes from that. How well do you do when you're you're by yourself and you don't feel like you have anything to give? Lose sight of your joy? Yes, right? Because you don't feel like you can do anything. You feel like, well, this is what I felt like God had called me to do, and therefore, that's been taken away. I'm lost, right? I'm lost. Therefore, you lose sight of that significance um, of God doing something through you. Joy arises out of knowing that your life and my life has great significance. Do you believe that? Do you believe that your life has a great significance? Yes. Your head goes like this. Okay. All right. 
There you go, all right? Just want to make sure. You and I, there's a purpose. You've heard me talk about this so many times about God has a plan for your life. There is a significant purpose for you and I. And when we realize that, there is a deeper sense of joy because of that within you and I. It is based upon the hope that the Christian has... Um, did I miswrite that? Joy is based upon the hope that the Christian has that, that God's will. Yeah, I miswrote that. Uh, that God's will shall ultimately be accomplished, okay? Joy is based upon the hope that you and I have that God's will will ultimately be accomplished, right? Yes. Y'all starting to look at me like a calf at a gate, okay? All right? There's a sense of hope because we know that God's going to do what he says he's going to do, okay? That's what that is rooted from. You say, well, dang, why didn't you say that the first time? But that's where our joy is found. There is a sense of joy found because we know that God is going to work all things for the good of those that love him. He sees the big picture. There is joy in knowing that. There's also a deep sense of joy in Paul's life, okay? Let me read. This is the end of Paul's life, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, that many believe that this is, uh, this is kind of the end of his life, okay? He's writing this letter uh, to Timothy, uh, trying to be a great encouragement to Timothy. Paul knows he's at the end of his life. He's in prison. Uh, he knows that his time has come to an end. But there's a great sense of joy in his life. As you read through the book of 2 Timothy, you see how encouraging, how uh, bold he is in talking to Timothy about how to be a great uh, man of God. So this is at the end. This is chapter 4 of 2 Timothy. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read some of it. Starting with verse 1 of chapter 4. I solemnly charge you. This is Paul charging Timothy. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ. Who is to judge the living and the dead. And by his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out, uh, in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort. And with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires. And will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside the mist. Be you, but you, be, and be sober in all things. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Listen to what he says. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. And I have fought the good fight, and I have finished the course, and I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Think about that. Okay? Think about the heart in which he wrote that from. What do you hear out of that? You hear joy, right? You hear the certainty that knowing I have been faithful. I have served. My life has been significant. I've tried my best to walk in God's will, to express God's will to all of those that I have taught, that I have spoken to, you guys that I've mentored to. Uh, and I know this is it for me. Okay. And I'm at hundred percent peace with this and I'm looking forward to it. That's exactly what you hear. Why? Because of that certainty, right? If he did not have that certainty, how would it be different? Okay, how many people, this is very, very heartbreaking to think about, but how many people have you known that's in a latter part of their life and they're extremely bitter and they're lost because of their lack of faith in who Christ Jesus is? There is no peace, there is no hope, there is no joy, there is no understanding of a purpose of life. There's no certainty. It's a horrible, horrible thing to experience. And so when you read from a man that is literally within a very short time of being killed. To hear of the joy that he has. Think about how it got that way. Right? It came because he was what? Certain. Right? Right? Of who God was. He was certain of who Jesus Christ was to him. In him. 
through him. And of course the Holy Spirit producing those fruit through his life gave him that, right? So there is joy to be found there. Your joy is what you grab a hold of. I shouldn't say grab a hold of, but it makes a pretty picture. That you grab a hold of in the midst of a time just like what you just talked about, just like what y'all have walked through, uh, in a time to where the world thinks, why in the world can you be at any place to put a smile on your face? Why can you have any sort of peace, inner peace, Mr. Ron? How can you have any sort of being... You don't want to use the word okay because nobody's okay, especially with, with what you've walked through. But, but being at a place that you can have that certainty, and that's where your joy is found. The world don't understand that. Um, man, there's a good example of that, but I don't have permission to tell that. Um, but, but, there's, but there's it's very much uh, easy for us to see in others when that is portrayed, Right? When you see a family that is grieving one way and you see another family that's grieving a different way and one way looks very peaceful and the other way looks very painful, what do you see the difference is? The certainty, right? The joy that comes in that, that walks through that. Mark, I'm I'm assuming you're raising your hand. You're doing your finger like this. Yeah, being reminded of where your joy is found is, is a great thing, right? Uh, and God uses different things for that. Uh, but don't, don't misunderstand. I know what you're saying, and I totally agree with that. But don't misunderstand joy for happiness. The world will blend that line real easily for us. And before we know it, we're thinking like the world, which is joy is situational, right? Uh, your joy... It's like having a continual fountain brewing, bubbling within you, okay? That is the joy that comes as being produced by the Holy Spirit. It's like having your heart pump blood through your artery. Every time your heart beats, it does what? It's pushing blood, right? It's the same thing the Holy Spirit's doing with the fruit in your life. That's the same thing that's with the joy. Now, you may end up with some plaque. Sin. Okay? You may end up some plaque. And if you get enough, what happens to it? You end up doing what a lot of, some of you have had done, right? They go in and they have to do what? They put a stent in. What does that do? It opens that artery back up. For what reason? So that the blood can flow back through, right? It's the same thing with joy in our life. It's the same thing with those, all the rest of these fruits that we're going to talk about, okay? All right? They root from a source, just like your blood does. It comes through your heart. Your heart is pumping, making it move. And when we get sin in our life, it keeps us from recognizing that joy that is within us. When we get enough sin, we, get, we can't see it at all. Which we end up on life support. Unforgiveness. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's right. That's right. It does. Think about how you think about how when you're walking away from the Lord or you say, well, I try to walk in continual obedience. Understand, okay? When you sin in your life, you recognize that sin. God breaks your heart for that sin in your life. You confess that sin. What you feel on the other side of that is joy. Okay? It's not situational. It's uncovering, it's unclogging the artery is what it's doing. You're getting that, that oneness back with the Father, which brings, which is where that joy is found. Walking in continual, uh, walking in a continual state of obedience, that abiding in Christ. You and I cannot walk in a place of fullness of his joy. Remember, that's what he said in John 15. I want you to have my joy in you so that you can be what? Complete, right? It's exactly what he's talking about. Walking, abiding in him, letting that flow through us is where we get that joy from, okay? Um, but don't try not to do your best to, to not... Uh, allow that to to run over into um, uh, run over into um, 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 happiness. Okay, even some of the articles that I read online, in searching and looking and reading and get other people's opinions about joy, you would be probably not surprised. There's a lot, even Christian authors, that blend that line. They they start tying joy into happiness. It's circumstantial. There's things that happen that brings joy. No, you got to time out on that. It's not, it is not circumstantial. You cannot do that, okay? Uh, so be careful, even in things that you read, uh, that you verify that it is biblical uh, with what you're reading, okay? Um, questions, comments, anything on joy? I really kind of hate to jump into peace because we don't have much time left. Now, you were talking about Eight minutes. see her again. I have that certainty. Yeah. And I don't think people understand how can you be happy if your daughter your daughter just passed away. Well I can be happy because I know I'm gonna see her again. Yeah. I have that certainty that that's gonna happen. That's right. Yeah it's the certainty in knowing that God is going to do what he says he's going to do, right? That's yeah that's joy. That's not happiness. Yeah. I knew what he was saying. I didn't yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It is forever. Yeah. 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 Ha happiness, it's like you've, we've talked about that a billion times when we did that tonight again. Uh, but, but you can be happy and, and, and mad all in the same sentence. Okay. Your joy is a continuous, it, it's almost like, I don't know anything that's totally continuous. Um, uh, I would say electricity, but electricity can go off, okay? Uh, but but it's, it, there's a continual feed there, okay? I guess the best illustration is, is the heart pumping blood, which I know that that stops too one day, but, but you get the picture. You get the picture. Dana, was you going to say something? Okay, all right. I thought you looked at me like you was going to say something. Huh?
I don't know. I'll give you my notes when I get down. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So. Questions, comments about joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Nehemiah 8.10. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. As, as we walk through these, you're going to see that they're compounded upon each other. Okay? That's why they put love first. Absolutely. Absolutely. you tell them no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So how can, if we truly walk abiding in Christ, which I know that's going to totally change everybody's life majorly if we do that on a consistent basis, but if we're doing that and the fruit of the Spirit is being produced in our life, how might that bring opportunity for discussion with other people that see you? Okay. Do I? Yeah, absolutely. 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 They get you got brought into this, didn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it, it will totally, people will be able to see that. They'll be able to notice that just with everything that we walk through on a daily basis, the way that we react to every individual thing from the way somebody said something to us, somebody acted a certain way, something didn't go our way. Uh, we find out some news about our health. We find out something about a friend of ours. How we respond, that doesn't mean that you can't be sad. It doesn't mean that you can't grieve. It doesn't mean that you can't have a broken heart. What it does mean is that your joy is not affected. Okay, Your joy stays consistent. That is, and of course we're going to talk about next week about peace, but that joy is where peace is found, okay? Those two run hand in hand. They're, they're kind of one and yet another, right? Um, and so we'll talk about that next week uh, on our uh, discussion. All right, anything else before we go? All right, well, let's pray. Father, we thank you. The God, you are so good to us. We 